Welcome to Live with the Author. I'm Amanda Goodwin, and I'm one of the co-editors of Reading Research Quarterly. I'm also an associate professor at Vanderbilt University, and I am so excited to be here with some of our wonderful special issue authors. Um, welcome, Sonia Cabell and Heijing Hong. Yes, correct. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I'm so excited to hear your thoughts as we move forward. Thank you for having us. Great. Well, so let's dive right in. So, you know, I'm always wondering, how did you guys come to get interested in this topic? Well, um, our article focuses on what we know about building students' language and knowledge through content-rich ELA instruction in kindergarten through second grade settings. And I came at this issue from my work in trying to improve children's language skills in early childhood settings with the goal of preventing later reading comprehension difficulties. And we found in, in my work, we found that language skills were really hard to change. Mm -hmm. And so I began to look at the influence of instructional context on children's language learning. And I found that content area instruction may offer a unique context for children to build those language skills. So I began looking at approaches that combined content knowledge and language into reading instruction in the early grades. You know, as I was reading your piece, that was what I was really excited about, because I too find it so hard to ch change language, partially because we have to start so early. You know, it's such, such a right. thing that develops across time. So um, I was excited to think about integrating those two ideas of language and content knowledge. Right, it really starts right at the beginning, right? So. Uh, it's important to get to develop those skills really early. Hey, Jen, how, how did you come to this topic? Um, my work has focused on reading comprehension in the elementary years and has been informed by Kinch's construction and integration model of, of model of comprehension, which emphasizes the importance of content knowledge in comprehension development. So Sonia and I conducted a meta-analysis study uh, uh, to examine the impact of integrated literacy and content area instruction on comprehension, vocabulary, and content knowledge. We also conducted an experimental study to examine content-rich literacy instruction on comprehension, vocabulary, and content knowledge in kindergarten. Awesome. And I assume that all that was showing that we should, all the results of that was showing that we should do this. We should integrate content and language knowledge as we teach our little guys. Yes. Very cool. So that leads me to this, my next question. People define the science of reading in lots of different ways. What is the science of reading to you guys? Well, to me, um, I, I co-authored another article in the same special issue with my colleagues at the Florida Center for Reading Research, and that article was led by Yaakov Petcher. And in that article, we talked about the science of reading as being the accumulated knowledge about reading, reading development, and best practices for reading instruction um, that are obtained by using the scientific method. So with the priority of having a literature base that is both generalizable and can be replicated. Very interesting. Do you have anything you want to add, Heijing? Yes, um, my answer is very similar with Sonia. To me, the science of reading is systematic, systematic investigation of how we learn to read and how reading needs to be taught. And it also includes examinations of, of previous investigations on reading and teaching reading to inform the field about what we know, what we do not know, as well as different, pers different perspectives of re reading and teaching reading. Well, and that makes me think about my next question, which is how does your study add to the science of reading? So, you know, building on the large literature base we have before us, how does your study move us forward? So um, when you think about the simple view of reading, it's R equals D times C, like reading comprehension is the product of decoding and linguistic comprehension. And in this paper, we're entirely focusing on the C or the linguistic comprehension. Um, and it's really important to develop C at the same time you're developing the D, the decoding in the primary grades, uh, because you can't wait to develop C until decoding is already in place because it's too late then. Um, and when, when we think about linguistic comprehension, we're often thinking about the important role of language, uh, particularly vocabulary. 
But knowledge is another key contributor to C that we often forget about. And so the knowledge that somebody brings to the text is a chief determinant of how much they understand that text. And rather than only activating prior knowledge, we argue that building content knowledge um, is, needs to be a priority. Um, and it's, since it's not happening much in the primary grades right now in the content areas, and that's largely due to the fault of reading, that's the amount of time we spend on reading instruction. Um, so we need to look at models that combine content and literacy instruction. And one way to do that is to have content rich English language arts instruction. And there are several widely used curricular programs that are trying to do this. And many large districts around the United States are using this approach. Um, so our central claim in the article is that content rich English language arts instruction in the primary grades can cultivate language and knowledge and influence linguistic comprehension. Um, we review the existing experimental and quasi-experimental literature on the topic. And we also, sit, also share our preliminary findings of a randomized control trial of one instantiation of a content-rich English language arts program, and that's core knowledge language arts. That's, I mean, to me, it's so exciting because it, I see so many of these um, manuscripts from the special issue talking to each other because you mentioned the importance of building background knowledge and we have another study in the science of reading issue that says you're right because in their study they had an experimental um, study that looked at kids who had the knowledge that was activated versus kids that were taught the knowledge and had that activated and it mattered the kids who needed to have the knowledge to be activated in order for them to do deep comprehension things like inferencing. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to see it all come together. So what do what does your study tell teachers to do tomorrow? I can answer the question. Um, this article suggests suggest teachers design and teach instruction that can simultaneously support literacy and content knowledge. Also, it explains commonly used instructional strategies in previous research, such as utilizing multiple texts that are coherently connected to one another around the content and teaching content-related words. For example, when students read about different, uh, about different birds building different nests, the next book can be about can be about something related to birds, such as um, such as a book about how parent birds build nests for their chicks. In this way, students can experience leveraging what they already learned from text to comprehend new but related text, and to extend their content knowledge by engaging in reading. For vocabulary. When students are reading about birds, teachers can focus on um, teaching the meanings of words related to birds, such as fledgling and molt. Yeah, and that I means to me, again, that's exciting. I think that's the fun way of teaching. You know, it's the teaching to build knowledge, it's the content, it's the meaningful thing. And so, you know, you were mentioning text sets, which I loved using as a teacher, but I loved using those integrated into a meaningful unit. And so it makes me think about these exciting ways that I as a teacher can teach. So it's no longer that I just have to teach the language side, I can integrate that language into content. So what are we, what does your study say for principals and policymakers? Um, this article uh, basically suggests that building content knowledge matters for literacy development and content area learning. So schools need to make sure that students have plenty of access to informational texts about nature and social world. And students need to have sufficient instructional time from the beginning of schooling for science and social study, science and social studies, regardless of their reading proficiency and language proficiency. Interesting to think about what the content is. And then there's another piece out on the issue that talks about like whose content matters. So what I'm hearing from you though, is that as a principal and policymaker, I need to start prioritizing knowledge and content. It's not just reading all day or math all day. 
it's bringing in from the science, the social studies, the social justice, the arts, et cetera, um, to build that general knowledge. Yeah, and I think um, we're not trying to make a claim in this paper on whose knowledge um, to teach. Um, we're just looking at the literature of integrating these areas. Um, and, uh, but that's an so important in, question. In your study that you guys did for your RCT, what was the knowledge that was integrated? It was a program called Core Knowledge Language Arts, and it was science and social studies uh, topics. So it was in kindergarten, and it was knowledge of... Um, so in science, it was um, plants and farms and social studies. Uh, some topics were Native Americans, um, my five senses. A lot of the topics you see in the standards um, were incorporated there. Very cool. So that makes me wonder, what, how do we connect with parents? What are parents' roles based on your study? Yeah, well, our paper didn't review research with parents, but it still has some important takeaways for them. So I have a five-year-old son, and I think about all the time what would be beneficial for his development for reading and knowledge. And I try to think about what are the topics that he likes, what make him, make him curious, and we visit the library and look for books related to his interests. And um, a lot of the, the studies that uh, that have positive effects on children's outcomes, use read-alouds for a vehicle for learning both about vocabulary and content knowledge. So it's important to read aloud informational texts and have conversations with your child that help them to understand the content and also expand their vocabulary and inferential language skills. Um, another way is to use educational videos. Um, for example, PBS Kids has a great show called Molly of Denali, um, where the main character, Molly, is from Alaska, and she uses informational texts specifically to learn about the social and natural world around her, and she solves real-world problems. Um, and those are great opportunities for students, to, for children to learn, and also then engage with their parents about discussions about what they're learning. here. That's so important. I mean, I actually read your article, and I realized most of what I read with my daughter, who's four, is narratives, which are great. But I pulled out a dolphin's book yesterday and she loved it, right. you know, so it just reminded me of my role as a parent of, you know, being conscious about what I'm reading with her. Right, so absolutely. what do we have to tell researchers based off your study? So for researchers, it's important to note that there are surprisingly fewer studies in this area and um, that more experimental studies are needed to really best understand the impact on children's skills and the condition under which children may benefit from instruction. Um, and since knowledge and language take time to build, longitudinal studies where students have a program over multiple years is important. Um, another takeaway is that, you know, we tested one widely used program for knowledge language arts um, and found that after one semester of implementation in kindergarten, there were significant impacts on standardized tests of vocabulary and knowledge, which is a rare finding for intervention research in the area of linguistic um, comprehension. You must have been celebrating. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. You know, I remember watching a t uh, Steve Graham give a talk many, many years ago, and he talked about effect sizes and how the tiny effect sizes still have us dancing on the moon. And so, like, he was trying to, he was trying to say, uh, contextualize effect sizes in educational research. But when they're significant, even though small, um, it matters. Um, it matters to students' development, particularly in an area like language and knowledge that build over time. Um, another thing we wanna make sure re researchers take away is that when developing new curricula, it's important to consider an interdisciplinary approach that involves both literacy researchers and content area researchers to really properly meet both sets of standards uh, if you wanna have a truly integrative curricula that meets standards in both areas. Very cool. So what does this mean for COVID times? We're in this crazy period where, you know, virtual instruction or hybrid instruction. Are there any takeaways for that? Yeah, I think in terms of the times we're living now with the global pandemic, I would say that it's really important. One takeaway is that our work highlights the importance of fostering language interactions with students to build their content knowledge and interactively read aloud um, and have rich discussions where students have ample opportunity to talk and contribute to the discussions. And that's getting harder when we're not in the brick and mortar classroom, but we can't overlook how important these interactions are for students learning. 
Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think that's so important. So, you know, another thing that I'm always interested in for the science of reading is that a lot of times it's taken as sort of a divisive um, concept, right? People are always like, I'm on this side or that side. And, you know, I, I don't know why it is that we always want to be on a side, but what do you guys think in terms of moving forward? How do we take your um, manuscript or your perspectives and move forward and bridge perspectives? Mm -hmm. um, before we answer your question, uh, we would like to acknowledge that we have diverse pers perspectives in the field of reading education. And we would like to say diverse rather than divisive because we do have common ground on reading and teaching reading. At the same time, we have differences. And it is actually good to have differences because it reflects the complex nature of reading and teaching reading. For example, um, Nell Duke at the University of Michigan compared the complexity of reading instruction with that of work in emergency room by emergency physician. Also, um, despite the differences we have, we are aiming the same goal, supporting students reading and writing. Yeah. And I would just add that the importance of building content knowledge doesn't take anything away from the importance of fostering foundational literacy skills, teaching comprehension strategies, motivating students. Our intention here in this article is to highlight a sometimes ignored piece of the puzzle of reading, which is building children's knowledge. I, I, I mean, and again, I love both those perspectives. I think that was the point of our special issue was to highlight that we do have a lot of common ground and to help researchers to help practitioners to help principals and policy member make, makers see that common ground and then also have discourse and dialogue about those differences so we can really understand what they really are and you know how we can come together as a group I so, really you know, this is I want to say I really appreciate that how deliberate it seemed that you were to take uh, into account different perspectives in this issue well, they, I mean, I think that that's the only way we're, my personal opinion is that's the way we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we need to all hear each other and listen to each other and learn from each other and possibly change our minds or not, but at least hear and listen, um, which I think is exciting. So this has been fascinating. I'm so excited to move forward, um, really embracing this perspective of language and content knowledge integrated as part of my instruction. Are there some takeaway messages that you think we should go away from with? Yeah, I think that there are three key takeaways that Hagen and I talk about um, from this work. And that is, the first one is building content knowledge during English language arts instruction can support students' comprehension, vocabulary, and content area learning in the primary grades. And that we should move beyond merely activating content knowledge to systematically building knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it needs to start right from the beginning. I like it. I'm going to leave it right there. I think you said it perfectly. And thank you guys so much for coming um, and so much for being here. And if you want to read more, you can find their article on our special issue on the science of reading. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you.